please welcome the one and only Hannah Kimbla. Hello everyone and welcome to the first recognition event of 2022. It is great to be back with you all and it's been an eventful year so far already with many fantastic developments for Crowd1. One thing, however, has stayed consistent, the importance of recognitions. Now, as you may remember, the way we do recognitions now this year has changed. We will hold regular standalone events for all our achievers to make sure you're celebrated the way you deserve. We truly believe that our success is because of your success. Behind me, you can see some of our amazing leader-led recognitions around the world. This is just pictures from this year. I'm so inspired by this all. Your hard work is what has helped Crowd1 to become the biggest influencer marketing company in the world. Now, we have a great event full of entertainment planned for you. And I'm looking forward to recognizing all the members climbing the ranks. Let's get started. But first, a testimonial. Ben, je suis euh, Delphine Vanier. Euh, je suis directeur des étoiles euh, à Crawan. Comment est-ce que j'ai rencontré euh, Crawan? Ben, je l'ai rencontré à un moment très décisif de ma vie. J'ai rencontré Crawan au moment où j'ai été licencié. J'ai été licencié deux semaines après. J'ai rencontré, j'ai eu l'opportunité de Crawan. Et j'ai embrassé Krawan. Mais mes débuts avec Krawan, ça n'a pas été tout rose. Hein? Les obstacles que j'ai rencontrés avec Krawan, c'est souvent avec euh, euh, les filles, les filles qui n'ont pas toujours compris euh, exactement euh, ce que c'est que Krawan. Tantôt, ils m'accusent, par exemple, d'avoir pris euh, leur argent, il faut rembourser parce que ils n'ont pas de retour de Krawan, donc ils m'en veulent. Alors que non, ce n'est pas moi, il faut écouter, il faut savoir ce que Krawan nous offre. Et puis voilà, tu saisis l'opportunité, tout simplement. Mais avec Krawan, quelle action je mène toute la journée depuis que je ne travaille plus Il n'y a que ça que je sais faire. Krawan m'a donné beaucoup de choses. J'ai embrassé Krawan. Krawan m'a permis de me relever, m'a permis d'aller mettre mes enfants à l'école, m'a permis de, de cette humiliation que j'ai suivie au, au niveau de mon travail. Krawan m'a permis de relever ce défi. Alors, comme je ne veux pas m'arrêter, j'en parle. Je ne parle que de Krawan. Et si vous avez suivi en Côte d'Ivoire, j'ai été euh, l'une des premières vidéos de Krawan en Côte d'Ivoire qui a été virale. C'était ma vidéo. J'ai fait une vidéo sur Krawan parce qu'après quatre mois de Krawan, j'ai eu quelque chose et j'ai fait un témoignage et ça a été viral. Dans le monde entier, on a parlé de Krawan. C'était moi. Mes produits préférés à Krawan, c'est beaucoup. Hein? Hein? J'aime bien les commissions que Krawan nous donne, donc il faut faire rentrer beaucoup de gens pour que Krawan me donne euh, 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 les commissions. Mais en dehors des commissions, ça c'est juste pour m'amuser. Il y a live stream, on voyage. Je suis venu aujourd'hui à Dubaï euh, grâce à live stream. Nous sommes dans des hôtels IP et grâce à live stream. Bon, je, je suis de la vieille garde, je ne suis pas très jeune. Donc, euh, mystère, j'essaie je, 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 d'imiter mes enfants avec mes enfants, parce qu'ils sont très, très euh, numériques, avec mes enfants, donc j'apprends avec eux. J'essaye de jouer les jeux de mystère avec mes enfants, c'est tout. Voilà les deux, deux produits phares que j'aime chez, chez Krawan. Live stream parce que je voyage, je dors dans de beaux hôtels, et mystère parce que mes enfants aiment jouer aux jeux, et je me, je me laisse entraîner avec mes enfants, tout simplement. Mais écoutez, 
après avoir vu ce que Krawan m'a fait, je reviens toujours sur mon licenciement parce que j'ai été licencié et puis euh, Krawan est venu me donner comme sur un plateau d'or un gros gâteau. Et je ne voudrais pour rien au monde m'arrêter. C'est vrai qu'avec mon pays, on a des soucis avec mon pays, mais euh, il faut penser à faire ailleurs que dans notre pays. Parce qu'il ne faut pas aussi... Euh, 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 les autorités, il ne faut pas les affronter. Faut pas les, les autorités ont décidé quelque chose, on les respecte, mais il faut voir ailleurs. Ailleurs où Krawan marche, je crois qu'il faut le faire. Mon futur sera de voir ailleurs, dans d'autres pays, où Krawan marche, pour que je puisse toujours continuer à utiliser Krawan, à faire plaisir à Krawan. Et une chose qui m'a plu à Krawan, c'est de faire gagner mes filles qui viennent après moi, de faire gagner ces filles avec les produits de Krawan. C'est un élément important quand tu sais que tu as présenté l'opportunité à quelqu'un qui a saisi et que grâce à toi, il a connu Krawan, qu'il arrive à, à s'en se, euh, sortir, ça fait chaud au cœur. Ça fait chaud au cœur. Ouais. Welcome, everyone. We're excited to be here with you. Hi there, Rokhan. Hi there, Vera. It's good to see you as well. Now, to kick off, we are celebrating all the newest Director One Star members. Congratulations to all of you.
proud one strives to achieve, and the results are showing. Indeed. Today, however, we would like to give special recognition to our top 20 producers for December 2021 and January and February 2022. These are the managers, directors, president, and senior president leaders who posted spectacular network growth. Let's... <laughs> Producers. Now, a leader who joined Crowd1 from a traditional sales background and then rose through the ranks at a staggering pace, inspiring all of us with her great outlook and termination. Today, we are proud to introduce her as one of Crowd1's latest ambassadors. And I got the opportunity to sit down with her and talk to her over a Zoom call this week. I wanted to find out how she managed to grow so quickly and what her next goal is. Please stay tuned for Christine Wu. Okay, so I just wanted to um, meet you like this because we can't meet in real person yet. Um, and how are you doing today? Oh, yes, really good. So, Christine, I wanted to congratulate you on your ambassador title. You have it now for a couple of months. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> it's really, really great. And I wanted to hear, how long have you been in Crowd1? When did you, your journey start? Um, I uh, started this business uh, since 2020, January, and become the ambassador, I think, about 22 months. Yes, that's amazing. attracted me to focus on lawyer in crowd one and i have uh, some summarize to uh, do the compare with other company uh, the first one um crowd one changed a lot of people's life and then all my teams are winners and then we are not just only member um, but also we'll be part of uh, this company and then we are real shareholders in this company so that's why no any company can offer this benefit to us and uh, secondly, that um, Crowd1 uh, for us, not only just platform to make money, uh, the deep meaningful that uh, we can from go, we are go from the earn to own, and we own the passive estates in the different ways of Crowd1 in the future. And um, no has company done before, and the Crowd1 breakthrough, the old MLM system uh, model is unique. It's a real long-term passive income. Um, the third things that are the totally different with other companies that uh, because uh, crowd not just for the members, but also for the entrepreneurs who want to create or innovate uh, their industry. And the reason is when we for everyone to be part of crowd one. And so for me, uh, I like what I said, we're not just for working with a crowd one. Uh, the special things will be part of this crowd one. So that's why as a pastor to me means we should lead and impact more people to create crowd one, which become the business empire. Yes, it's a really good um, explanation. I like that you're so structured in your, in your thoughts yeah. around this. Uh, tell me, you, what's the key to your success, your personal success? I think a successful is to come from the teamwork is very important. So I think I can reach this successful, not just only my person, 
uh, only myself is all from the all team and all for the wonderful leaders we work together. And for me, I think it's very important that if you want to hold a, a stable team and then let them keep growing faster, it's important that training, especially the mindset training. And then uh, for me, I always uh, organize a different type of uh, uh, courses to the team and uh, the different activities for affect and then inspire and uh, motivate, motivate more people around us. And not only just for the professional of knowledge courses, and I would like to do the calm, uh, subconscious training for the team and then help people to find uh, their potential, uh, potential thinking and potential the uh, insight and help them to follow their passive action plan to reach their goal. So um, not only like this, not only the training, um, but also I will have a regular meeting with the president uh, together. We uh, discuss how to uh, improve the team and how them to find the uh, solution, how to fix the problem in the team. This is very important. And I will let them to share their experience, how to build their team and let all the president to learn each other and for better duplicate. This is very important. And you mentioned mindset training. Can you tell me yeah. a little bit about how you run your mindset trainings? Uh, my session, like uh, before I, I'm not sure if you watched the documentary about the undercover billionaire. And this is amazing, amazing, a uh, very good training for the team. And then I organized it uh, courses for uh, for nine for eight days, and then help people uh, how to from zero to become rich. And then I use this um, uh, documentary and let people to share each other, and then they can get a lot of experience from this story because the billionaire from zero uh, to be rich to fly to another city and then just spend uh, 90 days and then he can do again and without any uh, condition, uh, without any uh, he reached before and then just from zero from the uh, another city. So that's why I want to show the people that he can do it, we can do it just because of what you think and what you really want. And then after that courses, a lot of people, wow, inspire a lot. I remember the small, uh, the, the youngest in my team is uh, 17 years old. And then when he uh, watched this uh, 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 documentary and then joined my classes and they inspire him a lot. And then he tried to approach uh, the entrepreneurs and they're very successful. And the oldest uh, members are about 72 years old. And then he told me, Christine, you know, uh, in my ages, I just want to relax and then retirement. And then I don't think I have still other things I can do. But from these courses, it inspired me. And then I know, wow, my life just started. I still have a lot of things I can do it and can do better. So that's why uh, he has a strong motivation to work hard in his life. So that's why I'm so happy that uh, this is a good to inspire more people uh, to do more in their life. And then uh, the recently, and then I have a 21 days get up earlier program. <laughs> and then let everybody... I'm very intrigued, yeah, yeah. tell me more. Yeah, I remember at first uh, just about 50 people to join and later on and about 300 people and then join and then they like to do this challenge, get up earlier, up, uh, around there, get up 4 a.m. 4 a.m., 5, yeah, yeah. At first, just 6 a.m., and then later on, 5 a.m. and 4 a.m. We are so excited because we uh, encourage each other and then uh, manage our time and the important to manage our discipline. This is very important and then manage their um, uh, they, uh, what they want and then manage the time is very important because every day we have a lot of things to do and how to manage our time and uh, improve a high efficiency is very important. So after that, I let everybody to uh, share their experience, what they learn from these 21 days. 
and at the same time we inspire the whole team so that's why uh, to motivate them to keep going this is very good to uh, inspire uh, all the team and then we uh, work together so teamwork is very important it was very positive uh, responses that you got from the early morning uh, rice challenge then. yeah yeah every day in the morning and then i can hear the phone ding 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 oh i know the people are get out we are in a different uh, country uh, all the world so the time is different but when you listen to this sound from phone and then another side it seemed to encourage me yeah it's time to work so it's a very yeah. good experience <laughs> That's fun. and i wanted to ask i mean now you have closed ambassador one star and what is your next goal, I can guess? And in what timeline are you working towards? For me, um, become a ambassador means that I want to help more people and then uh, become the ambassador. And so I have a confidence that we will have uh, three more ambassadors at the end of this year. And then I will keep training and educate uh, the courses to all the people who want to become the ambassador. And then we'll keep to training and uh, educate uh, awareness of a planning IX or more upcoming product. And then because I have a strong and passionate team, so I know we will uh, stronger, we will become stronger, uh, uh, faster and better. And we all move forward together. And then my goal, um, to just uh, hope I uh, have more ambassador in my teams. This is uh, uh, what I want. Uh, the position um, is it, it, it's, um, it's nothing for me, but uh, I, I think if I can impact more people, affect them to uh, work hard and then get their abundant life is what I really want to see and I will be happy for them. This also shows what a great team spirit you have in your team. Uh, with you as a leader also, you know, your goal is to have more ambassadors in your team, which is really nice. Uh, and if you could give one a suggestion you know this is our three-year anniversary and if you can give one suggestion for someone who's new to crowd one or thinking about joining crowd one what would you say to them i just want to say uh life is a short and then we can we can try the things that create our life and then never try never know just do it because i'm a very uh um uh, not special person is that if I can do it, everybody can do it. I um, I think I'm a different with other people just because I have a courage to try the new things. And then um, I, I never afraid, I never fear to fail. For me, everything just my experience is to build up my value. It doesn't matter uh, successful or not. I'm very enjoy this process because I learned a lot uh, in my life. So uh, for me, I just never try, never know. Um, yeah, I, I think people like to follow the person uh, positive and can uh, infect them. So I think I'm a very positive and then I can give a lot of energy uh, to the people. And then uh, together we can create something special in our life. So this is um, uh, my opinion. Yeah, this is really empowering to hear Kristin and I really thank you for your time to chat to me a little bit uh, and I hope the next thank time you, it will be in person and not over Zoom. Yeah, can't wait to see you next time. Hannah. Thank you. Bye. Thank you. Bye. What a fantastic story by Christine. Now I will love how dedicated she is to her team. Yes, and that her goal is to produce more ambassadors inspiring yeah, really inspiring mm. we are now reaching the big leagues the president tears first up is our president one star wow a big achievement indeed now reaching president one star level is something to be really proud of let's take a look at the people who have reached this level
right, my name is Olivis uh, Sinewan. Uh, my title is a manager three star. Things uh, were great and assisted us to get through the COVID situation, but we're all very excited, especially after the event we are here for, to take it forward in a more uh, old style way and, and having that personal contact with, with new members. Um, well, I'm a person that is adventurous. I like to travel uh, because of uh, the nature of my hobbies like sport and motorbiking. That's why uh, Life Trends will be a massive aid to make things more affordable in that part of the world. Uh, I must admit I'm not a big gamer, but uh, I must say uh, playing pinball as a youngster draws you back to, to that part of your life and uh, I'm sure we will get going there as well. Well, my hopes is to empower as many people uh, in the business, to empower themselves to, to have a better lifestyle. And uh, I don't think uh, we could have hoped or wished in our wildest dreams when we started off with Crowd1 that we would be seeing a company that has grown so extensively that it is absolutely mind-boggling. <laughs>
These NFTs give their owners unprecedented access to the developers of Planet IX. The more cargo drops you bought, the more Nifty Tiger NFTs you received. And the more of these NFTs you own, the better your access. And the response has been overwhelming. <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Today, we're going to recognize those agents of change who bought the most cargo drops. Top 15 bronze at 10 to 49 packs, top 15 silver at 50 to 99, gold at 100 to 499, and platinum NFT tiers at more than 500. And one person who bought 1,000 packs for Platinum Plus status. Let's get to know him. After that, we have Jessica Anderson singing, I did it for love. Isn't that sweet? So sweet. <laughs> What does grit and determination look like? To me, it looks a lot like Christina Rickardson. Born in a cave, living on the streets and in shanty towns, she experienced many things that would break many of us, but not Christina. After arriving in Vindel in the north of Sweden and enduring the culture shock of moving to a European country, she made the decision to stay positive and create her own destiny and is now thriving. Christina is an award-winning speaker, and her first book, Never Stop Walking, was a huge success, both in Sweden and abroad. We are honored to have Christina with us here today in the studio to share her story. Hi, everyone. First, I want to start by thanking all of you. I believe that one of the greatest gifts we can give another person is our time, so thank you for sharing your time with me today. I also believe that we are good at showing up, but we rarely show up to listen. We show up believing what we already know. Today, I am not going to stand here and tell you what is right and wrong. I believe that most of us understand that things like right and wrong well, they wear different dresses. What I am going to do is to share part of my story, my experience and thoughts with you. I believe that in a world that changed so much and that challenged us so much, it's important for us to keep our humanity. It's also important for us to break stereotypes and to try to have an understanding for one another. For example, I was going to take me, actually, as an example, but I'm going to start by asking you guys a question. What do you see when you look at another person? Normally, what we do is that we put people and things in a box and we label it. And labels are everything other than understanding or listening. For example, what do you see when you look at me? A woman, a black woman. A Swedish person, who do I love? What religion do I have? Who am I? What box did you put me in? Did you put me in a positive or a negative box? And do you even know why you put me in that box? Who am I? Well, I was wonderfully introduced as Christina Rickardsson best-selling author, award-winning speaker, but I haven't always been Christina Rickardsson. For better and sometimes worse, I'm bicultural. I have two identities, two countries, two nationalities, two families and two cultures. So basically, double trouble. <laughs> I am made and I am created in two very different worlds. 
And it hasn't been easy. I have been lost. I have been divided. I have felt so much pain and sorrow. And I lost a lot of people. The first time I thought about killing myself, I was 10 years old. So, how did I end up here today? People tell me that it is a great story, but for me, it's not a story, it's my life. I was born in 1983, as Cristiana Mara Coelho, on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean, in a small city, Diamantina, in the fifth largest country in the world, Brazil. The day that I took my first breath, I have been told it's the same day that a Swedish king turned 37, and hopefully he had a wonderful birthday. When it comes to what country, culture, family we are born into, this is totally out of our control. We cannot decide this. I call it the lottery of life. For example, the ticket that the Swedish king got was to be born into a family that was privileged, that had power, that had status and money, and to a solidarity-strong country. I, on the other hand, the ticket that I got was to be born into poverty, into a country divided into rich and poor, black and white. Before I had the chance, to show anyone who I was, what I could become. I was considered by many of my countrymen as a person that had nothing to contribute to society. I was thought of as a future threat, maybe a criminal, a prostitute, simply someone not worth knowing, someone not worth giving a chance. As a newborn, I was, of course, unaware of this. I was unaware of the place that the world had put me in, the box and the label they already had given me. What I was aware of was my first home. It wasn't a house, it wasn't an apartment, not even a shed. It was a cave. I grew up in the wilderness of Diamantina, raised in this cave. My mom and I, we had nothing. We owned nothing. And I lived here for six years. There were two things that my mom and I had to fight out here. We fought the spiders, snakes, scorpions, the poisonous ones. And we fought hunger. And if you are thinking that we were a community of people living out here together, helping each other to survive, you could not be more wrong. It was just my mom and I fighting for surviving together. That hunger feeling that we fought, that is not a nice feeling. Have you ever been really, really hungry? Have you ever felt that burning pain that starts in the pit of your stomach and spreads to your whole body? until it doesn't hurt anymore. My mom would sometimes ask me, Christiana, does it still hurt? And I answered her, yes or no. As a child, I didn't understand why my mom would ask me this, but as an adult, I came to realize that, it, that she was checking where on the hunger scale her daughter was. Because when you do not have that burning sensation of pain anymore, then you know that you are starting to move over towards starvation. And when that happened, my mom and I, we would walk down to a red dirt road and we would walk 20 to 30 kilometers into the city. We would sit at the bus station. And I remember this walk well. I may not have been old, but the pain of walking without shoes for a long time when you are a small child and the pain of having your feet bleeding, that is something I think many of us would remember. My mom, she would pick leaves in the forest and she would put them on stones and dry them under the sun. And I, I would pick flowers to help her. 
So we took this into the city and we sat down there at the bus station and we tried to sell this so we could make a little money, buy food and support ourselves. I wish that I could tell you that we were successful in this, that my mom and I got a lot of the little we had with us sold. But sadly, that were rarely the case. 99% of the time, my mom and I, we had to start begging. Begging for food and begging for money. People, they would walk us by, they would pass us by, and they would look at us. Some would ignore us, others would spit at us, and some would call us names. Some got physical and kicked us. I remember sitting here as a five-year-old thinking that and not understanding why these people would treat us in this kind of way. My mom and I, we had done nothing wrong, we hadn't hurt anyone, and we were polite. I did not understand why they treated us like this. Just by existing, just by breathing, we were somehow annoying them. The worst thing here wasn't that people ignored us. The worst thing here wasn't that people hit us or that people called us name. The worst thing was to be ignored. Because when you are ignored, you are excluded. And when you are excluded, you do not belong. And we want to belong. I said in the beginning that one of the greatest gifts we can give another person is our time. One of the worst things, according to me at least, that we can do to another person is to kill hope. When you kill hope, you do something to that person. It's a feeling that goes deep inside your heart, your soul, and your spirit. And you stop feeling love, you stop feeling that you can create, you stop feeling that you can grow. It's important to give each other hope, because hope is love, hope is creativity. Sometimes, some people would give us some food, they would give us some money. And what my mom would do is that she would buy rice or food, and then we would walk back to our home, to our cave. And out here, it was very tough for us. It was a tough life. But I also remember this time with a lot of joy and a lot of happiness. Because it was just me and my mom out here. So I got all her time, all her attention, and all her love. And I think that we today are forgetting how important this is to give of our time, our love, and attention. We easily give our children a cell phone, an iPad. We allow them to be on social media. And I am not against technology, on the other hand, but I don't think that technology should substitute human interaction and love. And Instead of that, we are striving to get more likes. That is not love, that is not time, that is not to feel seen. My mom and I, we would climb on top of our mountain and we would sit there for hours and she would tell me stories and I was so fascinated by them. And I remember one time asking my mom, mom, can we sit on clouds? Can we fly? And my mom, she looked at me and she gave me the most amazing smile and she told me, Christiana, nothing is impossible. I would truly want all of us, all of you, to think about this. A woman born into poverty, raising her daughter in a cave, tells her daughter that nothing is impossible. If a person that has nothing truly believe, which my mom did, that nothing is impossible, imagine what someone that has something, what they can do. One night, my mom and I, we were chased out of our 
cave. There were men with guns chasing us. I don't know why I was just a child. I just remember running in the forest with my mom scared. If there were night hunting or if there were men that had heard of the woman who lived in the cave and had come to try to have their fun, I don't know. What I do know is that my life came to change. Then the next day, my mom and I, we started a long walk to Sao Paulo, the biggest city in Brazil and in South America. And if life in the cave had been tough on us, it was nothing compared to what a life on the streets of Sao Paulo and in the favelas came to be. My mom taught me that in the wilderness that this snake that is red, that is white, and that is red, white, and black is poisonous. This snake will kill you. This spider that has this shape can jump and is poisonous. But sitting here on the streets of Sao Paulo, because we had nowhere to live and my mom had no education, she could write her name, but that's it. And sitting here, you know, looking at all the people passing us by, I could not look at a color, black, white, brown, and say that this is the person that I, this is the color that I should stay away from. I could not see a shape and say that this shape is danger. Instead, I came to learn that, they were, that it was those people that actually smiled a little extra friendly towards me. They were the ones that I should stay away from. They were danger. At the age of six, I learned that a smile is danger. My mom, she tried to get a job. At least that's what she told me. And that led to that I was left on the streets and in the favela by myself sometimes. And a child, especially at that age, six, seven years old, left on the streets of Sao Paulo, well, you are an easy prey and you don't survive for long. So I ended up in a group of street children and together we survived. We became a family, we helped each other, we, we worked on the streets and we also stole food to survive. In this group of uh, children, I came to know a little girl named Camille, and she became my first best friend. Can you remember your first best friend? Can you see the picture of her or him? Feel the feeling you had towards the person, that special connection that you get with that, with that friend? Camille was that person to me. She and I, we became more than friends. She became my sister. We would do everything together. We would, you know, fight. We would survive, steal, share food together. And this little girl, she had an amazing gift. And I am this kind of person that, I'm a little nerdy, I am this kind of person that believes that everyone has a gift at least one gift, if not more. But if we are capable of seeing that gift, that is another, another thing. Camille's gift was to tell story. She was a storyteller. And when she sat down in the favela, all the children would gather around her and it would become quiet and everyone would listen and enter one of her magical word, words. Camille did not only tell story, she did something else. She spread hope. Because every day on the street, every day, we were told that we had nothing to contribute to the society. We were told that we were not worth putting energy, time, education to. We were told that we were street rats, cockroaches. We had no value to the society. We were criminals. And this little girl, by telling her story, she would take us from a world that looked at us like that and into a world where we, the street rats, we could become heroes. And that is an amazing thing. She gave us so much more than stories. One night, 
in the favela, Camille and I, we decided to sleep outside on the outskirts of the favela. And the reason we chose to do this was because there were a street war being fought inside our favela. There were the drug dealers, the military police, and the police fighting. And when this happens, a lot of innocent people, they die. And Camille and I, we knew the risks of sleeping on the outskirts of our favela, but we decided that that was probably the best idea. I remember waking up that night. I heard there was some sound that I heard, and I remember thinking, what is that? And I woke my friend Camille, and she looked at me. So I put my finger to my mouth, and I hushed her. And then I put it to my ear, and I signed towards the building, the corner of the building, to show her that I had seen something, that I had heard something. And Camille, she looked at me and she nodded. That was a sign that she understood and, and that we should look around the corner to see if it was danger or just a street dog or something else. It wasn't uncommon that we had to move several times during one night. When Camille and I looked around the corner, we saw men with guns, we saw the military police, and we saw four or five children. This is something that every street children in Brazil knew about and still today know about. We turned quickly around and were about to run for our lives. When one of the men sees us and he yells, grab them. To try to explain how it feels to be seven years, years old and to run, to literally run for your life, to have panic fill your whole body, I cannot. I have never been so scared in my whole life. Camille's gift was that she was a storyteller. My gift in life is that I am athletic. I am very fast and I love to run. And this night I was running for my life and Camille and I, we were just screaming to each other, run, run faster. And while I was running, I see this wall in front of me. And it's not like I run and I stop and I, I try to get up on the wall. I throw myself onto the wall and I manage to get my fingers on the edges. I remember thinking then that it was so strange that I could feel how my body hit the wall, how I lost all the air in my body, but I couldn't feel any pain. I remember thinking this should hurt. It was very strange how time could go so fast and at the same time so slowly. Everything felt like slow motion. I came, I managed to get myself on top of the, of the wall and I turned around to do what Camille and I had done so many times. I give her my hand and I pull her up and help her because Camille was not athletic at all. But when I look back, that is when I see that my friend has fallen behind. I see how two men grab her and how she is fighting, her little body is fighting, trying to get loose. One of the men let go of Camille and I was panicking so much seeing my friend being caught and at the same time seeing this man moving towards me. And I remember that I did not know what to do at all. And then I hear my friend scream at me, Christiana, run! Without knowing that I had made this decision, I am on the other side of the wall and I am running for my life, leaving my friend behind. And after I had run for a while, you know, I looked back to see if the man was still following me, and he wasn't. And that is when I stop, and I start to think and start to understand what just had happened to us. All the stories we children had told each other was now happening to us, me and my friend. At seven years old, 
I made a decision that I today can be proud of. I decided to try to find a way back, a different way, back to uh, that place. I did, I managed to do that. And that night, I am standing behind another building, looking at the same situation from another angle, and now I see my friend Camille standing there with the other children. I tried to think of some way to, find, to help her. And uh, at the same time, I was so afraid that the men would see me and that I would have to run for my life again, or even worse, that they would actually catch me too. And while I'm standing there, trying to figure out a way to save her, I see how something happens to her forehead. I hear the shots, and I see how my friend's body fall to the ground in the most strange way I have seen a body fall, lifeless. That night, the people that get paid, because believe it or not, poor people pay taxes too, that get paid to protect us, they killed all those children. I knew, we all knew, Street children know this, you know, that we are considered as less, that our human value are less to our society. But to actually see them kill us like that, that I, can, I cannot and I will never be able to describe that feeling, the feeling of not having any human value at all. I think that what saved me that night was two things. The shock of seeing this, I couldn't even scream. And the second thing was what happened earlier when my friend screamed at me, Christiana, run. She could have asked for help. I can promise you this, I know for sure I would have screamed to her to come and help me. But instead, she told me to run. She saved me, and I could not save her. That night, I ran from this horrible place, and I ended up under a staircase where Camille and I sometimes slept together. And, uh, you know, I threw up. It became dark, and it became light again. And I don't know if it's because it was a new day, and it was night, you know, or if I just passed out and came to. What I do know is that my mom, who came and, and went, she found me. She knew where Camille and I lived, you know. And she found me, and she did what grown-ups can be so good at. She sat down, and she started to stroke my hair and my cheeks, and she was listening to me. And I told her about what had happened, and my mom listened. And after a while, I don't know how long, my mom stood up, and she gave me her hand, and she told me, Christiana, promise me something. Whatever happens in life, never stop walking. I wish that I could tell you guys that at the age of seven, I was that smart that I understood what my mom wanted to tell me. I wasn't. I literally thought that she meant that there were a place where I could go, and if I went there, I would get rid of all of these huge feelings that I was feeling, you know. I was feeling so sad, hate, frustration. I was missing my friend. I felt injustice. And if I went to this place, all those feelings would disappear. And maybe, just maybe, my friend Camille would be there too. So I asked my mom, but mom, where should I go? And she tells me, it doesn't matter where you go, as long as you don't stop walking. I remember that I took her hand, and we stood up, and we started walking taking the first steps to healing.
1991, I was adopted. My brother and I was adopted after living one year in an orphanage in Sao Paulo. Lilian and Sture from the north part of Sweden, they came to Sao Paulo and they took us to a new world. This new world was very strange to me. I have felt, I have gone through many cultural shocks within my own country, living in a cave, moving from a cave to the streets and from the streets to favela, from favela to an orphanage. But coming to Sweden was a huge cultural shock and I don't think that I will ever experience something like that again. Everything in this new country was different. Everything. The sun felt different against my skin. The air did so too. The smell was, dif was different. Everyone spoke this weird language that I could not understand. And, you know, you listen to music that was so different from the Brazilian one. The food tasted different. Everything was so so different. And in one way, it was very exciting. In another way, it was a huge shock to me. It was scary. But the biggest thing, the biggest difference wasn't how the sun, you know, felt against my skin or the food or the, the language or the difference in the religion and so on. It was me. I was different from everyone else. I looked different, I acted differently, and I talked and spoke and thought and had different values. And I came to understand that Christiana, this Brazilian little girl, had no place anymore in this new world. I came to create a new identity, Christina. All the time while doing this, not understanding why this new society at least it felt like this new society demanded that I lost, that I, I put away everything that was not known to them so, that, so I could fit in. I did not understand why I had to do that, but I did it. I paid a high price, but I did it. What, I'm gonna be honest with you, what sometimes annoys me though is that after all of that, after putting one identity away and creating another identity to fit into a new world, to this new culture, there is still some people today that will look at me and because of something so small and so insignificant as the color of my skin, they would tell me that this country, Sweden, you do not belong here. It's weird, isn't it, that something so small can have so much power sometimes. It wasn't easy becoming Swedish, and sometimes I should not have tried so hard. This picture is proof of that. And I came to learn a lot of things. One of the things that I came to learn during this huge cultural shock was that if I am standing over here, looking over there, which I was doing a lot of time, looking at the Swedish people, thinking, what is going on over there? What are they doing? Not understanding. I came to realize that they are probably also standing over there, looking at me and thinking, what is she doing? What is she doing? And not understanding. As an eight-year-old, I started to realize that the only way to actually understand each other and come closer to each other is to communicate and is to have patience and to try to understand someone else's situation. Identity is something personal. It is, it is easy to forget that. I grew up in a world on the other side of the Atlantic Ocean telling me that I was not good enough that I did not have money enough, I did not have status, I did not have the right color on my skin, and so on. I was told that I was a rat, that I was a cockroach. I have met many people in my life that have told me who I am and what I can do and cannot do. I have learned that they have no right to do this. 
And I have also learned that I have no right to tell you who you are, what you can do, and who you should love or whatever you want to do. I have no right to say that. Your, your identity is yours. So if you don't want anyone to tell you this, please don't take anyone else's identity away from them either. Once upon a time, when I was sitting on top of my cave with my mom when I was five years old, she told me that nothing is impossible. So I started to fly. I started believing in myself. She gave me that hope, that love, to be strong enough to believe in myself. And I started to fly, and every time I fly and I pass a cloud, I see my mom and I sitting on top of our cave, and I see her smiling towards me, and I feel that love and hope. And every time in my life that I feel insecure, that I feel that I'm going to fail or that someone else is telling me this, I remember those words. It's so easy to forget what builds a human up and what breaks a human. Three little words can build someone up, and three little words can break them. Have you ever stopped to think about how you treat other people? What you, what you tell them, what you say? Are you encouraging them, or are you breaking them down? My teacher told me, my Swedish teacher told me that I would never be a writer, I would never write a book. And it's not up to him to decide that. So I decided to tell my story, never stop walking, the words that my mom had once told me. And it became a bestseller in Sweden, in Brazil, on Amazon. And I'm not telling you this to brag or anything, I'm telling you this because even if someone is a professional and tells you that you cannot do something, you should not listen to that person. If you really want to do something, if you really believe in yourself, you can. So I did that. But what I have come to learn is that even if the greatest power is inside of ourselves, if we say, I am good enough, then we will be good enough. If we tell ourselves we are not good enough, we will become that. So even if that power, the greatest one, is inside of us, it's so much easier if we actually help each other, if we support each other, if we give each other kindness, love on our journey in life. That I have learned. And I try, I will not lie and say that I su succeed all the time because I don't, but I try to live by that. I try to treat other people the way that I would like to be treated, to get a smile, to say hi, to tell them at least that I see you. It doesn't cost me anything to do that. Actually, it gives me something. It gives me joy in life. I am a much better person when I do that than when I don't. I would like to leave you with two things. My mom once told me that nothing is impossible. I believe her. And she also told me to never stop walking. This is what I believe. I believe that every person on this planet are bound together, not by culture, not by religion, not by nationality. I believe that we are bound together by our feelings. We can understand each other through our feelings. We are all the same there. And I believe that every one of us will feel joy, happiness, and love at least one time in life. I also believe that, sadly, we will feel pain, we will feel sorrow and, you know, loss. And when we do that, when we feel this, it's very important that we don't stop walking. That we, take, that we keep climbing this hill that we have to get over, or this mountain, this Everest, our Everest. And the important thing is not what we find on the other side of the mountain, it is to get there. I have climbed many Mount Everest in my life, and I have found something else on the other side. So I want to end this by answering the question, 
I asked in the beginning of this lecture, who am I? Well, I'm like you. I'm a human being. I'm different. So are you. I am no more and I am no less. Thank you so much for sharing your time with me today and take care of yourself and each other. Thank you. To each senior president here, you have to be diligent and passionate. And the next group are exactly that and even more. Ladies and gentlemen, let's meet our newest senior presidents. Now we get to be inspired yet another time by Crowd One's very own Kenny Nordlund. I can't wait to hear what Kenny has in store. Welcome, Kenny Nordlund. Wow, it's amazing to be at this uh, recognition event for uh, Crowd One. I, of course, want to start with saying congratulations to everybody that's recognized on this event and everybody that has been recognized. Recognition is, the, I would say, the backbone uh, of this industry. Now, I've been in the industry for over 27 years, and talking about recognition in general, uh, that is one of the most important things. It's what drives a lot of people in this business. And obviously, people have different drives and different things they want to be doing with, with their business. Some people want to go ambassador. Some people want to go senior presidents. Some people want to do presidents. Some people want to do directors. Some people want to do managers. And some people are just working a little bit here and there. And that's one of the fantastic things with Crowd1. It is actually for everyone. Now... I've learned from a lot of different people during the years, and I actually have some points talking about leadership in general. And I thought I'd go through these different points with you. And it's a little bit what it takes uh, driving this business. And of course, some of these points are if you are building a big business. But it's really all different areas, no matter you know if you're working one hour a week, or 10 hours a week, it is very, very important to have the right focus and be ready because there will be challenges on the way building a global business, which it is everywhere, of course. Talking a little bit about leadership, one of the most important things is if you don't know where you're going, it's hard to get there. I usually say that find your why and fly. It's very, very important for you to know what you want. What is your why with Crowd1? Why are you going president? Why are you going director? Or if you're going ambassador, why are you doing it? It is super important to know your why. Now, goals in general is what keeps people or gets people focused, driving every single day. And one important thing around goals 
is that it actually keeps your self-motivation up. Now, self-motivation is not always easy. And that's why we have fantastic leaders that actually helps you, motivates you. But it is important to have your own motivation, self-motivation. Because what if the person motivating you every day, every week, goes on holiday, don't show up to motivate you for one week? That's why you always have yourself. And if you have the right why, you will be motivated every single day moving forward towards your goal. There is some things you need to be ready for. One of them being what I call the emotional roller coaster. There will be you know, challenges on the way. You'll have frustration, you'll have fear, you'll have different areas where it goes up and down. Now you need to be ready that these different emotional roller coasters will be happening because it's a new business for you. It's a new atmosphere, something new you're doing, and it will be different things coming uh, on the way. And that again is why it's important that you know why you're doing this. And of course, it's always important to work harder on yourself. Now, a fantastic man said, work harder on yourself than you do on your job. His name is Jim Rohn. I've listened for years to this gentleman. There's a lot of good stuff to listen to Mr. Jim Rohn. Why is this important? Well, you need to grow. You need to grow with your business if you're building a business. And that also comes in the key point when it comes to duplication. Duplication is the key point of this business. And everything you do or everything you don't do duplicates. What do I mean by that? If you do a lot, people that you bring in the business, they will look at you and they will duplicate you. If you, don't do, if you don't do a lot, they will duplicate that as well. So you actually set the speed of your business. The speed of the leader is the speed of the group, they usually say. And you are actually in the power of setting that tempo or that speed in your business by actively doing the right things. That means if you're actively doing the wrong things, that will duplicate as well. So you need to be in the right focus and focus on the right things. What are the right things? It's important to actually be in the money-making action mode. What are those things? Now, this business is very, very simple, but it's not easy. We actually do three things with our time, and it doesn't matter if you're spending one hour in a week or 10 hours in a week or 30 hours in a week doing crowd one. Again, it is for everyone. You can choose to do one hour a month. But with that time, it's basically three things we're doing. First of all, it's sharing the opportunity. Sharing the opportunity of crowd one to other people. Number two is sharing our products and services as well. That's the main two things you do. Number three is teach other people to do one and two. So share the opportunity, share the products and services, and teach other people to do the same. When you're doing this, this is what you should put 99% of your time. So if you're working 10 hours a week, you should basically be doing this for 10 hours. And there's amazing tools uh, and support for you to actually be sharing the business with people, sharing the products and services with people, and also tools to teach people to do the same. Keep on doing that and be in that focus it's super important because, again, that duplicates all the time. So, again, do what you ask of others. Be a leader and lead by doing the right things, being active, showing and sharing the business opportunity, our products and services, and teaching others to do the same. Now, I've talked about challenges, and it's important when these challenges, problems appear, and they will always come. It's a, part of, it's a part of building business, it's a part of anything. Most important is always to focus on solutions. There's always solutions when there's a challenge uh, coming up. And when you focus on this solution and find the solution, success in that area will come. So keep on focusing on solutions, and that will as well duplicate. Now, leadership is not an easy thing. Leadership is leading by example. It's leading by activity. 
And a lot of times people talk about you know, leadership in a sense, but leadership is about action. It's about acting, not, it's not a position. And that is how you go to director, that is how you go to president, that is how you go to senior president, and that is how you go to ambassador as well. Now, during this year, the last three years, Crowd1 has set all the different records there is. And this year, there's coming so many new products and services, opportunities out there, tools for you to actually duplicate and build your business and grow your business even quicker with amazing opportunities, building your crowd and getting paid on multiple opportunities. This is a recognition event. We have a lot of people being recognized at this event. And during 2022, you need to put your goal. Where do I want to be? Is it going manager? Is it going director? Is it going president? Is it going senior president? Is it going ambassador? Whatever the goal is, put it down. Make it happen. Take action. Be a part of the fastest growing crowd there is. Crowd one. Thank you very much. The opening of the Dubai office have meant a lot to, to me and to the whole team because finally we also had, this is our uh, office, like we always say, it's, uh, we, we had the offices around the, the world before that was more uh, regular offices for the company. But here right now we can also feel that when people come here they get directly the feeling of this is this is mine, I'm part of this. And they can bring their people to see that it's for real. So it has meant a lot, a lot. And also, of course, that it is in Dubai, so people are more able in these times to, to go here. In Sweden, for example, it's not the same thing because people cannot travel from all the different continents. So it has been a really super duper part of, of yeah, our journey. There are so many, so it's, so it's a challenge to, to choose one. But I, if I mention some of them, of course, I already mentioned the, the office here. That is a really huge highlight. And also uh, that it was starting to ease up when it comes to, to travel. So people really could, we could start to see people again in local live events, but also, of course, in, here in Dubai. So that has meant a lot because meeting face to face is, is still the best way to do networking, even if uh, Zoom has been amazing, I mean, an amazing tool. And uh, there has been a lot of challenges too, but uh, I believe and feel that uh, we have, we have uh, overcome the challenges and we are coming out much, much stronger. So yeah, I'm looking forward a lot to 2022, but I'm also happy for what has been the, during the year. And now the pinnacle of today's proceedings, Ambassador One Star. You only reach this level if you're determined, hardworking and focused. Let's celebrate this fabulous achievement. Absolutely. We are so proud to introduce this amazing leader to you. So with no further ado, here she is, Eva Wang. <laughs>
What a day it has been. <laughs> you know, uh, every time I attend one of these recognition events, I leave inspired and really fired up. Yeah, you're not the only one. Seeing these top leaders succeed and move up gives me the inspiration I need to achieve in my own life too. Mm -hmm. And of course, we hope that all of you watching feels the same way. And who knows, next time it could be you being celebrated at the next recognition event. It certainly could. So keep working hard and persevering. I know I'm excited for the future and can't wait to see who moves up in the ranks in the coming months. And don't forget to tune in to our next This Is Now for a full business update on what is happening. Thanks so much, everyone, for watching. Well, we'll see you soon. Keep succeeding. Mm. Bye. Bye. <laughs>